Uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, you, you certainly get to know the guys from the other side pretty well. I think we've played them, our class played them nine times now. So you know uh, the other guys pretty well, and I know they know us pretty well now. So I guess just a sort of a, a good idea of what's coming, I guess. But there is, is there animosity? Is it, is it like Michigan, Michigan State, Yankees, right size? Uh, a little bit. It's always a tough game, for sure. I mean, you know, they're going to come out hard, playing hard, and we expect to do the same thing, so I think it'll be a, a tough game. It is every year, so we're looking forward to the same thing this year. Would there be more maybe? Sorry, just to go off on the back of that. Would there be more maybe if, if you guys didn't have this series in the bag kind of the last couple of years? You guys won six straight. So if it had gone back and forth a little bit more, you think there might be a little bit more in one? Possibly, but, I mean, each year there's the Capital Skates Trophy and then obviously the Mayor's Cup, so every game that we stepped on the ice with those guys, there's sort of a, there's a deeper meaning to it also. So I think every game brings a, a big sense of intensity with it. Does the last time you guys played them sort of illustrate what you were just talking about? Because you guys were a four zip and they didn't give up and they wound up being a close game in the end four to three. Yeah, they always seem to be, they always seem to be close games, tough games where, yeah, like you said, last year is a good example. You can't take a shift off against them because they're going to bring it every shift and it's, Every shift's going to be a battle. What happened in that game when you guys had the big lead? Did you let up at all, or is it just more of them fighting back? Um, probably a combination of both. Obviously, they have no quit over there. and Yeah, we probably took our foot off the gas, so the guys got a little bit excited. I remember Heinz, he had his big goal. <laughs> I know everybody's pretty excited on the bench for that. It was a cool moment. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's something that we're definitely looking to avoid this year. Cole, what's different? this year as opposed to last year's five-game start? Um, well, other than our record, obviously, uh, I'm not so sure. I think guys are just focused, and there's a big uh, sense of importance on these games, just the way that they end up sort of affecting the pairwise later on, just how important every game is. You really can't take one off. You only get 34, so you got to make sure that you can make the most of them because they're, they're ticking away. While every game is important, do you guys place any more emphasis on ECAC play? Uh, I think so. It's definitely different in the league. There always seem to be rougher games, and yeah, in the league, yet even less. It's only 22 games, so one game could go a long way in making a difference for you. We uh, we saw that last year. So, on top of the Capital Skates and the RPI, I think these are also league games for us. So they're they're huge. Is there pressure with with this weekend coming? Because if you guys were to drop one, a lot of people would be looking at RPI's 0-3 start. If you knew it was 4-0 and one, what kind of happened there? Uh, I think more just the importance of the league games, I would say. You get you only get two chances against each team in the league, so there's really no room to for much error. So I think just the fact that these are ECAC games brings such a big importance to us. I know you guys try to get up for every game. Is there more oomph maybe going into this weekend because you're playing school that's just down the road? Uh, a bit, yeah. I think it's pretty cool, the, the rivalry that we have going on, and then again, so we talked about the trophies, the Capital Skates and the Mayor's Cup, so it's always cool to be playing for a little something extra. And with the ECAC part for the first time this year, coming into it as well, first league games are always big. So, yeah, a little bit. Do you know any, many of the guys there, like on a texting basis or anything? Um, a couple of, or a few of the guys, I guess. You just you meet over time just through playing hockey, this and that. So you know a few of them, but obviously through, over the weekend it's a little bit different and then you can talk to you guys later on. So you won't be texting anybody this week? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so. Your line kind of carried things the first couple games. You guys got Brett back, and his line has been very productive the last three games. How important is it for you guys to have two lines clicking like that so the other teams can? Yeah, it's awesome. On uh, it's been awesome, sort of the more the merrier kind of kind of saying. I know uh, Jack and Morty have done a good job also, so the more guys we can have going and putting pucks in the net for us and and then taking up ice time, I think, goes a long way for us in the long haul. Well, then, do you guys still feel like you're taking too many penalties against Northeastern? There were a few where they kind of got goals on you guys and kind of got themselves back into things. Yeah, definitely. That's an area where we're looking to improve. Obviously, the PK does a, a number on everybody's legs and sort of takes away from offensive chances. So I think cutting down on Tim's would go a long way for us. Brad, talking about this weekend with you again. Is there dislike between the two programs? I mean, uh, whenever you talk about rivalries, really, in sports, there's uh, obviously a little bit extra um, dislike for the other side just because uh, that's your rival. And uh, 
going into our fourth year here, we've uh, experienced it a lot. Um, the games are fun every time we play them. They're high intensity games, so uh, I think the rivalry adds a bit to it. But I mean, you play everyone else in the ECAC too. But the fact that they're close is there. Is that what makes it more of a rivalry? Yeah, they're close. Um, only about thirty minutes apart. Um, it's kind of a built-in rivalry between our schools. Um, we're playing for for a trophy basically every time we play them. So. Um, it kind of kind of adds to the rivalry, but yeah, I think uh, like you said, it's it makes the games more fun when we play them. One six, yeah. one six straight against these guys. If you put yourselves in, in their shoes, <clears throat> a little extra incentive just based on what's happened the last couple of seasons. Um, I mean, yeah, definitely for them and definitely for us too. I mean, every game, every game we play these guys, um, we're either playing for Capital Skates or Mayor's Cup, like I said, and. Uh, kind of just adds that extra animosity. You always want to beat your rival. Um, so just uh, I think incentive for both teams are very high. One of the things that people like to say about rivalry games is you, you throw the records out the window. I mean, this is still so early in the season, but they had a, a, a tough start 0-3, and, and you guys are obviously on the opposite end of that at 4-0-1. and How do you make sure that you guys do sort of overlook, or you don't overlook them? Um, I think we just kind of take it like we uh, take every every uh, game. Um, we kind of just focus on ourselves and we start preparing on Monday for the weekend. So uh, just like we did this past weekend with Northeastern, previous weekend with UNO, we kind of just uh, want to focus on ourselves and watch film and get better at what we can get better at. And um, just every every game in this league is a battle, no matter no matter what team you're playing. So coming Friday night, both teams are going to be ready to battle. And it should be a high intensity game. How much of an emphasis is there on starting quickly in in league play? Uh, definitely high. I mean, whenever you can get out to a fast start with a couple wins, it's always nice to get that cushion. But uh, I mean, only 22 games in league. You got to fa- you got to start fast to to maintain and just to be at the top of the league. So you obviously want to start fast. Brett, when you were a freshman, do you remember anything a senior said to you about this? RPI rivalry and now what are you guys telling some of the younger guys on this team? Yeah, obviously coming as a freshman you don't really uh, know like the extent of the rivalry. I've never played in a game so it's a bit different. I just remember I remember guys telling me like hey these are these are big ones, these are fun ones. Um, and then looking back on it to today has it's a big change. You kinda experience it and you understand it and uh, just uh, it comes with experience. Cole was saying these games against RPI are always tough, regardless of how the teams are playing at that point in time. What? Why is that? Uh, we always play each other tough. It just it's just kind of been a thing since we've been here, and I'm sure years past too. Um, not really sure why, but uh, both teams are just just ready to go at it. How dialed in is your line right now, and if you get it's worse than the things you have to do, you kind of keep that. Um, yeah, we've been clicking a, a bit the past couple games. Um, I think we just need to just to focus on um, on the way we play hockey, um, the way uh, we want to play hockey as a team, fast, hard, and smart. And, uh, I think the more we buy in, as long as uh, with all four lines going, um, the way everyone's buying into the team, I think it just helps our team run that much smoother. Despite the strong start you guys have had, do you guys still feel like you're taking too many penalties right now? Um, yeah, we have we've had some undisciplined penalties that uh, we need to clean up. Um, especially this past weekend, we had a we had a penalty kill a lot. Kind of kind of taxes a lot of guys' legs. Um, staying out of the box definitely helps. Keeps the game um, the game momentum going. But um, I think there's some penalties that we can tighten up. Some you're going to get penalties every night, but you just want to kind of cancel out the ones that that shouldn't be taken. Last year when you guys were on five. It seemed like Rick and a lot of you guys were saying, yeah, but we're still off beaten. We're not going to let this get us down or anything. Meanwhile, you're in such a different position this year. What do you kind of have to be careful of with the four old line? Honestly, the locker room is not much different at all. I mean, right. we still come to the rink every day to get better. Um, <laughs> we're always we're always working, um, competing with each other, no matter of our record, really. We kind of just want to focus on the weekend ahead, not the weekend's past. So. Just going into this weekend, we have we just got to focus on Friday, Saturday. It's same as same as last year. Like I said, like no matter our record, we're always we're always just focused on getting better. Kind of assess how you played last weekend. I guess you saw a few shots. It must have been a pretty good eye opener for your first uh, action here. 
Yeah, uh, I thought I did well. Um, I thought the first period of Friday's game, I had a couple goals that were questionable. Um, I was proud of the way that I uh, kind of handled that and settled things down and then bounced back after that. Um, but on the other hand, too, our guys get four goals and we get the win out of that, so it looks a lot better. Um, had they not done that, it probably would have been a questionable performance, so uh, I was happy with it. Rick said their dog pound or whatever it's called gives opposing goalies a pretty good ride. Yeah. Can you kind of describe that? <laughs> like even if the, the building wasn't filled up, but still they... Yeah, yeah, no. So the uh, the student section is kind of right on top of you there, and uh, they're uh, they're yelling at me for uh, almost the whole game. But um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to practice here, but uh, I get it worse from my teammates. So um, <laughs> wasn't intimidated at all. So what is it about RPI that gets this team going? I know you're young in this rivalry still, but what have you been told about it? What do you remember about it? Well, I remember that the uh, Capital Skates weekend and the Mayor's Cup game last year were probably one of the more fun weekends of the year. Um, I know the, the turnout at the rinks is great. I know they bring their band too, I believe. So, uh, But every game with those guys is a dogfight. It doesn't matter where the teams are in the rankings. So it's exciting because we get to look forward to uh, full buildings and uh, um, some hard-fought hockey games. As a goalie, are you insulated from some of the, I'll call it, dislike because you aren't skating against other guys? You may have guys <clears throat> crash into you, obviously, but because you're not out there, are you insulated in any way from some Yeah, of I, I think so. Um, I, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I like to be friends with everybody, and it's pretty easy, too, when you're never getting hit or anything like that. So usually when you're nice, guys are nice back. And so, like I said, because I'm not getting hit or hitting anybody, usually I just kind of stay in my blue paint and <laughs> let everyone else do the fighting. <laughs> you played all three games against them last year, including the Mayor's Cup. As a goalie, what's going through your head when you guys have this four-zip lead in, uh, you know, in Albany and all of a sudden next thing you blink and all of a sudden it's 4-3? Well, it's funny. In hindsight, well, I should say, during the game, you want to you know, just take it one shot at a time, right, and not think about that. But uh, now that the game's over, I do remember – the score going up four zip and like I said earlier every game's a dog fight and I'm like uh, I just I wouldn't be surprised if you know if they make a game out of this and uh, I don't know if you remember the first goal I think it was that they scored I, I go out to play the puck and I missed it and I got out of that and I got I think absolutely buried by somebody and then they have scoring like it's exactly the kind of balance that <laughs> you know you'd expect in a game like that so um, but no I said it was a that, that game that was a nail biter we barely hung on but um, we did can you put your finger on why it's always a dog fight between you guys? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I wish I had an answer for that. It, it's weird, but um, like I said, it, it's not always a bad thing, too. It's a lot more fun playing in you know, tight games and not tight ones, and especially emotionally charged ones. So. Brett was saying that you guys were 0-5 to start the season last year. It's a vast difference this year being 4-0-1, mm -hmm. but he said that the attitude in the locker room was pretty similar in both cases. Would you go along with that, and why, yeah. and why do you think that is? I agree 100%. I just think the focus for our group is taking it one day at a time, one game at a time, and uh, uh, preparation's always the same. So I just think the results have been different. Uh, I think we've been luckier this year in terms of like bounces and things going our way. So um, that helps us. But like I said, uh, everything else that we can control pretty much stays the same all the time. What's the dynamic between you and Kupski as you guys are fighting for that, that top spot? Uh, Jake and I are best friends. Him and I are really close, really close. Uh, whenever either of us are, are down or up, we're always there for each other. Um, we always push each other in practice. Um, if there's ever anybody that I need to go to, uh, he's one of the first. So, um, yeah, we're fighting for the same net, but it's a very friendly competition, and I, I consider him one of my best friends. How tough is it for you not knowing if you are going to be a net heading into it towards the weekend? Um, it's not necessarily difficult because, like I said earlier, preparation usually always stays the same. Um, and I think Jake and I both have been goalies coming up through you know, high school and the junior ranks where we never really were the clear-cut number one guy. We've always been fighting with other goalie partners and having to earn our starts. So we've been doing it for a while and we're used to it. Like I said, uh, at this level, it just it's preparation is always the same. You're just kind of taking it one practice and one game at a time. Has it made you better? Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, especially he, I've learned a lot from Jake, and especially just coming in here as a young guy. 
um, the work ethic from him and he does things right and so it's I've been lucky to, to see that because uh, it's difficult as a goalie you know there's only one or two other guys um, and we do things a little bit different so I've been super lucky to have a mentor like him to look up to and, and learn from. How do you make sure you don't let a mistake kind of pile up in your head knowing that Jake's on the bench if you're in net mm -hmm. to not let those mistakes kind of domino? Uh, that's a good question. Um, if you really if you want to get really technical it's during games it's it, you really have to learn how to control your mind control your breathing um, just always be focused on the next thing you can control which is usually a next shot um, worrying about that stuff like you said it can kind of snowball and the end result can be worse than it really should be um, so it, it's just really important to, to stay focused on the next thing next shot, whatever it may be, no matter the situation. There's about the rivalry with Union. You've been here a long time. Is there a dislike between the two programs when you're on the ice, or does it go beyond that? <laughs> well, I don't think we like each other when we're playing. If the, I guess if that's what you're getting after. Um, it's hockey. There's always going to be the rivalry, and that's our big no rivalry, so we're gonna. <laughs> but it's just like anybody else, just like any other opponent that that we're playing. I don't think uh, you go on the ice, especially in this in this sport, and you you like the other team when you're playing them. You respect them, but as far as liking them, I, I just don't see us playing that way. Is there more dislike is for them than maybe someone else? Yeah, I, I yeah, I'd probably say so probably say so just based on history and I'll just leave it at that based on history <laughs> what's your takeaway from the last time you played them you guys were up four seven Hines had the big goal and everything you guys are all pumped up for something next thing you know they cut it to four three is that kind of a reference point you look at to go straight with no. what to expect from an RPI game we won't lose we're not going to use last year that's a different team over there <clears throat> we're going to use what we see on film of the three games that they played, that that'll give us enough to, you know, prepare for them. And I don't think our guys in that locker room right now need that, you know, because again, that was last year's team at, uh, you know, with Union and last year's team at uh, R RPI. What have you seen out of RPI? And they've had some flux in their lineup and they're pretty young again this year. What are some of the early observations you've had? Again, I. I I see they're very structured. Um, just watching the uh, UConn game, and they're, you know, I'm like, I know I have a little bit left of it, but they're, it's 1-1 with, I think, about 10 minutes left or so. So, you know, they're, 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 they're right in games. Um, I think all but one there. Uh, just listening, and I haven't watched that game yet with UMass, the first game. But, you know, at, at home, they're very tough. And we just have to be, be ready for it, you know, to get into what they're really good at and all this other stuff. Um, I'll leave that out for now. Coach, as a coach going into this rivalry, they're 0-3. You guys are coming off a huge weekend, obviously. Is there concern from your perspective that maybe everything that's good going on with you guys coming into a weekend like this could be something of a, a trap, if you will? That's another history lesson because that's happened in the past as well. And I'm sure it's happened on both sides. Um, I had, it's funny, I was watching the football game here a couple weeks ago when I had, you know, one of our uh, alums kind of give me a history lesson when he was here and uh, they were D3 and RPI played them and, geez, they almost beat them and all this other stuff. So, and that was, I think, with Adam Oates and all their superstars and Hall of Famers. So anything can happen in the game of hockey. But this, we're not there. <laughs> but people will bring keep keep bringing it up. Uh, we're just worried about ourselves. Quite honestly, that's the way we've been through five games, and that's the way we're going to stay for, for game six. Fastly different start to this season compared to last, but Brett was just saying that the mood isn't really <coughs> that different from this point last season. Is that fair to say? And you go along with that as far as everybody being upbeat, just worrying about getting yeah. better as opposed to looking at the record? Right. It, uh, that, that's a fair assessment. I mean, the, the mood... It's just kind of a workmanlike approach. Uh, last year, 0-5, the 
the staff didn't panic, the, and more importantly, the players didn't panic. And I'm just hoping that we just keep that even keel now when you've had a little bit of, uh, you know, I guess a hot streak or a winning streak, whatever you want to put it. Um, let's just worry about tomorrow's practice because to me that's going to be the most important are the next two practices going into that game because I didn't think we started very well at all on Friday night. And we got lucky. How do you view league games in comparison to the rest? Obviously, every game is important and para-wise and all of that. But when you're heading into league play, do they take on more significance? Yeah, it's. We've talked about this. It's there's 22 games. That's 22 league battles to get to the playoff wars, and you know we're trying to get every point that we possibly can because again we only get 20, 22. Um, so it's not pro hockey. Our guys in that locker room know it. They know the significance of this game. You know, the Capital Trophy and Capital Skates Trophy and all that fun stuff. So, you know, there's there's a lot to play for. But outside of me, just bring up a few things about, you know, preparing these guys. These guys have computers, and they know what's going on. After three weeks, five games, is this team ahead of where you thought they'd be, where you thought they'd be, or behind where you thought they'd be? I mean, the record would think that things are good. We felt as a staff that the leadership would be, you know, around where, where we're at right now, um, based on the games. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, to sit here and say we're pleasantly surprised is we're not. Um, we're we're confident in this group as a staff, not overconfident by any means, but where we are today, you know, but is not it's. it's where we feel that we belong based on some of our, our older guys. Um, but we still have a lot of work to do here. You know, last time I checked, we're not one. So there's a ton of work here, a ton. Any more observations from last weekend specifically? And also your, your goalie apparently played pretty well. Um, only gave up one even strength goal in two games. Uh, just kind of assess how you played a little bit. Yeah, we, we had the um, ability and he'll see on tape to give Darian Hansen a little extra work that he really didn't need with our turnovers. So, and it was showed again yesterday in film. Uh, we, we don't need to help other teams. And they can help themselves just fine, but we seem to be helping them. And I think it's, it's just due to a little bit of October and just some careless, you know, turnovers that we need to clear up and fast if we're going to, you know, try to ride this out here. Are the turnovers a neutral ice or your own D zone or a little of everything? A little, a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, you know, breakouts and a little bit in the neutral zone and the areas that RPI will capitalize on because uh, we were fortunate that Northeastern didn't, you know, because Darian came up with some big saves or a defenseman helped out the other defenseman. Could we see both goalies this weekend? Very well could. You know, it was front, of, front Friday yet? Not yet. Or at least you're not telling us. No, I, I really, you know, it's it always goes week to week. It really does, and I, especially especially early. No one's uh, no one's quite ready for the National Hockey League here just yet. So it uh, <laughs> it's still a battle, which is which is good. So you haven't had a number one emerge yet in your in your mind. No, we have not. No, and that's up to those guys to figure it out. And you know, I, but I did think Darian Hansen did a, did a you know a nice job, and I thought Jake Kupski there for a while was doing an excellent job as well. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'll tell those guys the same thing that we mentioned to the other guys: do not get comfortable. Do not, because I think once once the comfort level sets in, then the play starts to go downhill. And that's not you know so that's not with the goalies, but that's the D and the forwards as well. How did uh, Parkinson look to you last week? I thought the first night he kind of was like with everyone else. They were trying to find their lungs and feet. Um, and then the second night, I thought he was much better. Yeah, he's he's coming around. Like it's, you know, it was a long it was a long summer, you know, just rehabbing and everything else, and then coming back, and he felt great. So, and then he had, you know, poor the the illness. So it was like one thing on top of another. So it took him a while. It takes a while to get the game game legs. He had the practice legs, but he didn't have the game legs just yet. And, I thought Saturday night was a good indicator of, of where we think he is. Did, did you and Dave Smith ever play together? No. Never? No. No, we had a mutual friend. 
that kind of played, we, we both played uh, together with, that was really it. So you didn't know him really as a player very, but very well? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I remember playing against him and, you know, it was a, a feisty, uh, feisty hockey player that was, you know, also very good. And that makes, that makes for a, a, tough, uh, a tough player to play against. You said before that his playing style is a little bit in contrast to how he's coaching RPI. You mentioned how structured they are. Yeah. That, uh... yeah, but also they also get involved in battle, and that's just that's that's what I remember about about Dave. You know, and you know, structured guy, and just the way he coaches, and you know, just reading his comments, and you know, he's a very very articulate guy. So. You know, that's just kind of the way they play. But you don't have any control over the schedule and all that. Would you rather see these two games later in the year than rather than your first two league games? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I, I think, you know, it's been so long now. I don't even know if we, I can't even remember the last time we didn't play in October. So, right. you know, it hurts my feelings that you say it, but I've, I've been here a long time, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Going into rivalry games, you always say it heading into playing RPI that you throw the records away, so it doesn't really matter what you've done up until this point, even though it's so early in the season and there's not much to go with there. Um, Cole was saying that they always play you tough. Why in your mind is it that these games are always tough? Is it the emotions? Is it just, what is it? I think it's just like you said, it's the emotional aspect of the game. Like where you want to play with emotion, you just can't play emotional that's going to lead to trouble and we're just you know it'd be kind of fun just to try to figure that out because I thought Northeastern at that place was a you know it wasn't packed but the first night was loud and their so-called dog pound there above our goaltender made it very difficult so it was kind of a good test for us because we had the three home games so it'll be different to play over there and be exciting just for our guys just to see how they react in that environment so we're looking forward to that 